This podcast was recorded on the lands of the Wadawurrung, Bonarung, and the Wurundjeri people of the Eastern Kulin Nation, and we wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners. Welcome to the Harry Community Podcast. Here at Harry, we love the nuanced and we love the unique. This podcast is going to be a place to celebrate and showcase some of Melbourne's best and most talented individuals. I'm your host, Darcy Keeley, and I'll be joined later by the fantastic Adrian DeVries, who unfortunately couldn't make it for the intro, but he'll be here with us very shortly. We've got a really special guest on today, Erina James. She's a New Zealand actress based here in Melbourne. She's just come off the back of the Amazon Prime show, The Wilds, and you would have seen her in feature films, The Changeover, and as a recurring character in Golden Boy. Today, we're going to talk to her about the challenges she faces as an actor how she stays resilient, and some advice for anyone trying to break into the industry. I'm really excited to get into it, so let's crack on and get hairy. Alright, when you're ready. When I'm ready. Well, I mean... You, I'm, yeah. I'm so ready. Alright, cool. I'm always ready. So how... how uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, give me a pause. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. How are you doing, Erin? I'm very well. Thank you, Darcy. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. It's pretty muggy and gross outside, so happy to be back here. Happy to be in your basement with the hairy logo, though. Oh, great. I know. Sorry, it's filthy. We actually <laughs> decided that it's funner if it's a bit ratty down here, yeah. so it'll make it look like I'm really working hard instead of hardly working in this dungeon. Yeah, just hustling with all the different projects know, going on in this little room. It was a lot worse this morning. There was a whole bunch of um, mouldy coffee cups oh, that upstairs. Sorry. Like, it gets the best of you. <laughs> well, I'm really happy that you decided to take those out for our um, little podcasting session. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. you're welcome. I know. I wouldn't force you to drink from one. But, um, anyway, so you've just come off the wilds um on amazon yes congratulations thank you very much you feeling good about it yeah really good like maybe way better than i sort of expected to feel it's yeah like had a really positive reception and i not that i didn't expect it to but you never know you put so much into something and then people will seem to like it and that is great yeah absolutely yeah. were you quite anxious like in this sort of lead up before it coming out like, i could imagine myself just shooting myself oh, like refreshing 100%. my phone and... it's so stressful and like i was in like a hotel quarantine facility going back to new zealand like the week before it was like leading up so like all this content would be coming out and i was like in my hotel room by myself like fuck 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 like what's yeah. happening you know like it was so stressful it sounds like a recipe for disaster like my anxiety i'd be like fuck if yeah, anyone was... roasts me here yeah. i'm just quitting <laughs> acting i cannot do it anymore yeah, that was very stressful and then you sit at home and you're just like watch all these different things and your phone just gets busier and busier and you're like oh. yeah but all positive things so that's good oh fantastic and so this is probably one of your I suppose, mo- like, longest projects. You've done some films and stuff before, yeah. but this is, like, a considerable chunk of your time. Oh, 100%. Like, we did, yeah, six-month shoot, and then before that, we shot the pilot in 2018, which took a month. Yeah. And then, obviously, all the stuff leading up to it, you know, the amount of time that you take, but you're on set, like, seven, six months. Gotcha. So there's a bit of time yeah. between the pilot and then you go back and do the remaining episodes. Yeah, so you, you sort of pitch a, well, they pitched a pilot to see if, you know, the network wanted to pick it up to make it into a series and thankfully they liked the pilot. So we got the funding and got greenlit. And so then 2019 to 2020 is when we shot the rest of it. What's that gap like? Like between like shooting the pilot and then like waiting? It's so stressful. Because yeah. it's, I mean, like you, they tell you to forget about it and not think about it. And like, oh, you know, it's all you can do is done now, but... You're still fucking checking for yeah, that email. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, still like, where are they? Yeah. So, so yeah, and it's just like, I kind of realised though, like it's just a consistent waiting game like the waiting never ends i thought that like when it got announced that we we're gonna film season one i was like oh the waiting's over it's like, yeah. no, then it's yeah when are you gonna go when's it gonna come out like oh. yeah and all the touring after and whatnot yeah. yeah so the touring after obviously happened during lockdown yeah. so can you tell us a little bit about how that probably was not what you expected yeah i mean like i'd never done like you know like a press junket or anything before been to a few film festivals but that was kind of it so Doing it virtually and just sort of like sitting in my shitty flat in Melbourne, like <laughs> in the middle of lockdown, like all glammed up in front of like my computer screen, like felt kind of lame, but also yes. quite nice because it was, didn't get to be too overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, a bit less stressful. I know, I could just sort of like duck out, see my house, and I'd be like, oh my God, what the fuck's going on? And then like go back in and. Yeah, like have... scream into the pillow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like there was no, like there weren't eyes on you the entire time, which was really nice. So you prefer that method of taking interviews? Mm. 
Or do you prefer the, the face-to-face interaction? I think I like the face-to-face. Really? Well, because it's like, you know, think about that if you're on, like, internet connection, there's, like, a delay. You can't look people in the eye. Yes. It's... No cues. Yeah, no. no. So it's, um... I think it was good for a first experience, kind of, like, eliminated an element of stress. Yeah. But I think now I like to look you both in the eye. <laughs> yeah, true. That was, that was a bit intense. I know. I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, have you always been into acting? When did you sort of get into it? And when did you realise it was something that you wanted to stick with? Yeah, I um, wasn't always into it. I think I was quite, I mean, quite an eccentric young person. So, yeah. like, I, my parents are in the arts and so are my grandparents and stuff like that. But um, I got into it when I was maybe 16, 15. I joined this um, acting course yeah. run out of this, like, uh, performing arts centre in Wellington. And yeah, I did a few courses on like Saturday and then the, um, the woman who runs the course, Miranda Harcourt, was filming a movie a year later and decided to cast me in it oh, in wow. my last year of high school. And yeah. so, um, yeah, so yeah, I did that when I was 17 and then I went to uni for a little bit and I kind of didn't think about it again. Yeah. And then just sort of got a few more things like here and there. Yeah. Took it seriously, but not like this is my direct pathway of life. <laughs> this is my chosen path. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, oh, I feel like fulfilled. No, it's like, it was something that was fun that earned money that I enjoyed. But now it feels more like a career. What were yes. you studying at university? I was studying um, Te Reo Māori, which is Māori language, yeah. back in New Zealand, and social policy and sociology. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? So much. So oh. I miss it so much. Oh, really? Yeah. I know. It's really... it's Because I didn't quite finish my degree. I had, like, a semester to go before I went to go film The Wilds pilot. And, yeah, I miss it. I'll go back and finish it one day. You will yeah. go back and finish it? Yeah. yeah good. Just very passionate about it, so... It sounds amazing. Where was it at? And Victoria University in Wellington. It's not the same as one here in Melbourne. Yeah, I was going to be like... Huh. Vic Uni? <laughs> no, of Wellington, the important part. But um, yeah, so back in Mali, I was doing that. Yeah, oh, cool. fantastic. I, okay, so let's... Swear yeah, you're swearing. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, I know, trying to like get hot. my back off this chair, like... Oh. Yeah, so that you can leave a little stain on the <laughs> Next to the mouldy coffee cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. So acting, obviously... Well, not obviously, but this is what I think. It's an industry where you're going to get a lot of knockbacks... Do you find that quite hard or are you like quite resilient in nature and you don't let it get to you? I've always thought I wasn't the most resilient person. I might have changed my mind on that, but I'm not sure. I think like acting for me, I think I saw it as, you know, this thing that I really enjoyed. And as soon as the like the negative um, input was more than the positive input, then it kind of wouldn't really be worth it for me anymore. Like if my heart was breaking every like two weeks because I was missing out on these roles that I was pouring myself into, then... I just think my like my soul would hurt a little bit too much for that. So I think I'm lucky that I've found success, for lack of a better word, in it. Yeah. Because otherwise I don't know if I would have continued to do it. Because yeah. it's, it's, it is, you're right, it's brutal. And, like, I think there's, I don't know what the statistic is, but it's, like, 99% of actors aren't working. So it's, like, to be one that is working is, like, it's just so lucky. It's not just, like, an assumed thing that if you're an actor, you've got a job. Like, that's, that's an yeah. insane statistic. It's, it's like, no actors. If you like, I think about, you know, like, LA and New York, people that go there to, like, try and make it. And it just must be a bit soul-destroying. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I look at it pessimistically, but it does seem like something that would tear you apart a little bit. Yeah, there are those things in, like, I feel like, um, I'm a painter and then mm-hmm. like the like five years out of art school there's like apparently it's like 75% of your class will just stop working because mm. there's I, just not places for them in the industry yeah well people just stop because they're just kind of crushed like yeah. you know like the same thing like applying for galleries trying to get gallery owners to see your work trying to get collectors to see your work trying to get in shows yeah. people and it's the same thing it's like you know people yeah. like oh acting it's like this amazing experience of life but it's like a lot of it's just like bureaucratic yeah and you're just trying to find work exactly and like i don't know what this magic formula is that mean that some people have it and some people don't or like you know there are those that train all their lives but some you know some shows and some projects want untrained actors and want like this new just raw talent that you find like in a classroom or off the street just like somebody that takes your eye so it's like fuck you can spend all this money and all this time in this drama school but then maybe that's not even what they want yeah yeah so it's a little bit of like so almost right time right place. yeah very much 100 percent, and like having the right people to kind of make space for you in a room as well like yeah, been very yeah. lucky to have a lot of people advocate for me so it definitely feels like it's a um feels like it's kind of just like the right place at the right time or just like mm. being around like going it's weird because you don't put enough emphasis on it when you talk to people about it, but it's actually kind of so important to always be in the scene and be talking to people. Yeah. Like networking, people are like, oh, I don't want to do it, but it's not even just like 
actively going to like say like no. an opening it's just like going to a party and meeting someone and yeah. they're like oh yeah you know I can get you into this show and yeah. it's like when you're a self-employed person it's like everything that you do in your life is kind of towards the direction of your work you know what I mean mm. like whether you're not working or you are every day you you know try to make these steps in order to be hired at some point so it's yeah. like your life it's kind of your work and you know the conversations you have and you know, yeah like, like you're your own boss you yeah. just always ticking away that yeah your head. exactly it is quite difficult to do that because I sometimes find myself with this brand that I'm doing good things and I'm out meeting people and talking about it and then you have like a week where I'm like I'm just gonna eat Uber Eats and sit in my bed <laughs> and I'm, I'm like how do I get back on my feet have I lost that connection but it is like it's just you just gotta go out you gotta talk to people yeah and I'm sure it's the same for most industries you just kind of got to be in the space to believe it yeah. Yeah, and you've just got to be around people. I feel like a lot of it is just, like, yep. being at a bar and then, yep. you know, Blim Blam knows this person. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. oh, hey. And then you talk to them after a drink and they're like, oh, you know, I'm this producer. Yeah. And you're like, in your head, you're like, oh, great. Exactly. And then be like, I wouldn't have done that if I just stayed at home. What if I hadn't gone to that bar and made that conversation? Yeah, that and then person. it all just starts to sound so, like, I know. abstract. It does. Like, like <laughs> the right place at the right it's time. It's meant to be. Like, yeah. it feels really, yeah, it feels really intense like that, but... It kind of is. There's no magic formula, No, you just got to stick to it and got to grind a little mm. bit. Yeah. So speaking of grinding, you're obviously on set for six months at a time. Yeah. Is it every day? Is it, like, did you find that hard to get up and be like, fucking get my head into it? I got to be down there. I'm sure there's a lot of sitting around. Like, I saw some photos of you, like, rugged up on the beach. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of time, like, behind the camera. Like, yeah. is that exhausting? It's hugely exhausting. I'm not on set every day. It's more kind of like, I mean, for the example of this shoot, we did, you know, three weeks, all us cast, and then there's different stories and different scenes, obviously. So... I think usually four to three days out of a week, if not, if it's, you know, my story's been highlighted in the entire week. And yeah, I mean, like, they're long days. Our location that we shoot on is, you know, it was like an hour and a half to two hours away from the out accommodation. So get up at 4 a.m., get picked up, driven to set, you do the whole, you know, hair, makeup, costume, breakfast kind of thing. Film all day, get home by like 8 30, 9 p.m., sleep, wake up at four, you know? It's like, it's, yeah. it's constant, but I kind of think about it like, if I work for six months out of the year, or if I work for seven months out of the year, most people do like a nine to five with weekends. But yes. like, if I do that intensive time, then maybe I get two months off and then I get to go back onto another job. You know, it's like just splits up the year differently, but it's yeah. all encompassing. It's a different schedule. Yeah. Do you, do you find like when you're on the set and you're just not into it, like you could be tired, I have a headache. Yeah. You just have to be professional and like yeah. eyes bright. Like you yeah. can't just be like, hey, I need a Barocca, like hit me stab. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I just got to do it. A Barocca. Yeah, yeah. Well, a quick fix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hydrolyte? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, yeah. It's like, oh, and then, you know, as you've seen, like me all rugged up on the beach, it's windy, it's cold. There's sand, you're wet, you're, like there's just, it, it's all the elements bearing down and the emotions bearing down and it's just all those things. But you kind of just got to like take in all the feelings that you're feeling in that moment and think like my character is in the exact same position. She's also cold, tired and hungry on a beach. I'm a bit pissed off on this beach, so is she. Like you just yep. have to like take those feelings that you're feeling and apply it to the real life scenario of the character and that's kind of how you get through. You kind of like channel it into something else. Got you, yeah, yeah make yeah. the most of it. Yeah. So your character... I don't want to offend you. You're a little bit similar. <laughs> Obviously, you're a little bit <laughs> Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're outing me to everybody. You stop yeah, it. <laughs> you're, you're less violent. Um, I don't think you're throwing piss at anyone. <laughs> no. No, from the Careful. show. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's what laughs> spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. But um, did you find it hard to get into character? Or do you found it was not too far of a stretch? Mm. No, it wasn't too hard. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was spot on on that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was... Um, she... She's just, like, explosive and just, like, feels all her feelings and then just, like, throws them at everybody. And I wasn't quite like her in high school, but I definitely was, like, a bit of an angry bitch. Yeah. So, you know, I could just sort of, like, draw on that. She was she was a lot, lot more kind of angry at everybody and angry at the world than I was. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too difficult. I think the hardest part about playing Tony is that... Um, you know, like, after there's some, like, really hectic scenes or some violent ones or, you know, ones where she, like, totally, like, blows her lid and goes crazy, going home after those days at work, like, you just kind of hold on to it and then you're just, like, in this, like, kind of manic fucked up, state. tense, manic, like, state. Whereas yeah. normally if she's just, like, snappy and bitchy and whatever it is, like, that's kind of like that you can roll in and out of, like, positivity and negativity of that, you know what I mean? Whereas, like, when you totally lose your shit, it's quite hard to shake off at the end of the day. So it's only a couple of days I remember being, like... I feel seriously fucked up by this. Like, yeah. that really hurt me. I gotta shake it off because yeah. it's not 
they're not my, that's not that's me. not who you actually yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you feel like these characters, because obviously you've acted, like done a fair bit of acting at this point, mm. do you feel like all the characters you play kind of like live inside you and represent different parts of you? Yeah, I like that way of putting it. A little bit. Yeah. They're all like within me, you know, like yeah. every, because at least the characters that I've played so far, I haven't done like, you know, massive character pieces or, you know, massive transformation. So they're all just kind of a different version of me, just like dialing up these different parts of myself, you know, like yeah. Tony, for example, there's dialing up the ferocity and then there's, you know, another one, so I've, you know, dialed up more the sensitivity. And then there was another role that I played that was quite, um, she was quite dry and rude and, and funny, like, like a little sister kind of annoying little sister and I'm like all these things I had the capability of being that sounds like a kind of very sweet way to do it because it almost sounds like the link to all these characters that you have is like yourself and then you just kind of either go one way or the other do you find that you ever like like when you're like you know uh, reading the script and trying to work out these characters do you have like is it kind of like a gut feeling you're like that feels like too Mm. weird to act in that way yeah. Or is, and that, does that come from, like, basing on your own personality? I don't know. There's some there's some scripts that you read and some auditions that you do where, like, there's just kind of, like, an immediate personal connection to it. Like, you know, you can pick up any kind of script and read the lines however you feel. But, you know, as you said, you know, sometimes it doesn't – there's not a place for it to sit in me. You know what yeah. I mean? And so those ones I'm like, oh, maybe that one's not – for me, you know, I can on paper be all the things that this character might be, but it doesn't sit so nicely. And I feel like when, I mean, again, I'm an untrained actor, so I I feel like I come from maybe a, a bit of a different perspective. Fucking chip on my shoulder, I'm an untrained actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Aaron. I'm not. <laughs> but like, it's, at least for me so far, has been more kind of like when I read a script and like the instinct that I naturally go through from here, generally, obviously conversations with directors and stuff tweak that performance, but the instinct is generally right in terms of if it feels right for me, then that's what translates on screen. That's what you guys see from me. Do you feel like a lot of actors work like that? Or from your experience of talking to other actors, do you reckon not all actors use themselves as a reference point? There's, I've spoken to a few of the um, other actors on the show and I know, you know, some of them like truly act. They think about like, I know how to act this emotion. I know how to get my, build myself up to like act this sad. Whereas... I don't ever really feel like I'm acting. I feel like if I'm losing my shit and I'm crying, it's because I genuinely feel fucked up. Yeah. But that, you know, both of those had their, you know, yeah. pros and cons because maybe sometimes I leave set feeling feeling pretty fucked up and I wish I could act these feelings. Yeah, and just turn it off and on. But maybe sometimes it doesn't work like that, yeah. Which I guess, like, does ta- dovetails perfectly with, like, what you said before about how, like, when you leave set, sometimes you do feel a bit like those emotions are, like, carried mm. with you. And you kind of wish you could, like, sever yourself off. Yeah. Do you ever worry that that's, like, something you might have to work through, like, later on in your career? Yeah, I think so. It's like, I was talking to another actor recently. They were like, oh, um, I'm so happy that I don't do drama and that I do comedy. Because, like, not that I think, because I, I could never do comedy. I'm so, would be so bad at it. It's so hard. <laughs> so, so hard. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's taking home the fucked up feelings there needs to be kind of a process established as to like how to like take the character off at the end of the day. And I know all these different actors that have these different rituals that they do, like whether it's putting on your makeup or putting on your clothes or putting your ring back on that you always wear and like kind of channeling that yeah. that is now me again, you know, these like symbolic these symbolic movements. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I mean, I haven't tried any of that out, but I feel like once, as you said, like if you're playing a bit more of a dark, going to have to, having to go to more of a dark place, then yeah, I imagine there'll have to be some structures put in place in order to, like, keep myself safe and safe in my work. Yeah, it's funny you say, like, the, like, putting your clothes on, because, like, my dad's a plumber, and he mm. does the same thing. Mm. He, like, takes his, like, casual shoes to work. Well, he used to. He's a plumbing teacher now. But when he finished working on these giant construction sites, he would, the first thing he'd do when he'd leave, he'd, like, change shoes. And really? he said that was the first thing that would make him feel better. And he'd do that every, he did it every day for, like, 40 years. And yeah. it's funny that it's, like, kind of the same method of being, like, yeah. to, like, kind of like almost, like, centre yourself and return, like, who you are back to you. Yeah. And you're right, because, I mean, I think about my parents, they're teachers, and come home and you watch them take the day off in their certain way and then sit back into themselves. So I suppose no matter what you're doing, you've got to find a ritual to not bring work home with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is that something you probably find the most challenging about acting, or is there something else that you struggle with or you're constantly kind of battling? Mm. I think the hardest part that I find is that, you know, you go into a job and this is my fault, but I write all these expectations for myself or what I think people want from me or what, uh, what emotional journey that I think that the directors want from me today. 
and having to let go of like there's no right way to do it because yeah. I beat myself up being like I didn't do it right like that's not how it's meant to be done or like oh fuck I fucked it up they're like there are no fuck ups like it's all good yes. just keep exploring whatever you're exploring so I think this idea that I'm always trying to get it right is probably the hardest and that probably comes with a bit of experience like even in another walk where I, where I work mm. and it comes sort of straight out of uni and you go into it and I had these expectations of what mm. I wanted to do and what I thought I would be doing yeah. and then when you get there and you're just doing something completely different but it's yeah. still the same yeah. umbrella I was like what the fuck's going on here yeah. and it was like a weird like yeah. I, now I don't know how to benchmark myself I don't know how to get feedback for this because yeah. it's just all uh, I don't know yeah it's also like with every job like the imposter syndrome, as you said, like going into this work, you're like, am I qualified enough to do this? Like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, like yeah. and everyone thinks that, you know what you're doing because they've hired you yeah. because apparently you know how to do this job and you arrive and you're like, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. I tried this out there. Like, no, I'm yeah. like, okay, that's all good. We'll yeah. try something different. <laughs> yeah. That was a test for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's like, yeah, I think I think it's a consistent thing though. I've like I've listened to a lot of interviews with you know people who've been in the industry for decades, and every role, every project they turn up to, yeah, they're like, oh fuck, how do I do this again? I can't remember. I'm guessing that happens a lot with like the like the six months of like intense work mm. and then two months off. So you recently got season two yeah. coming out. Do you anticipate those feelings kind of coming oh, when yeah. you go to film it? Oh god, yeah. It's yeah. like especially because now all the work that I've done is out there for everybody to see. And now it's like, oh, fuck, I've got to do that again. Like, and everyone, and I'm like, I don't want to look through the show too much and try to dissect, like, oh, God, how is, how does Tony go again? Like, yeah, and play you know, oh, exactly. I just have to do it again. But I'm like trying to find where she lives inside of me. She yeah. hasn't, she hasn't been kind of brought to the surface for, oh, God, a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, we wrapped in Defeb, um, 2020. So, yeah, like year and two days yeah. <laughs> it's the last That's time cool, she's yeah. yeah she's been out <laughs> yeah maybe make like a powerpoint slide or something yeah. to, you know, do like a little this ted talks on like tony presentation yeah. Yeah. when it's she's happy girl. she does yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are my top points <laughs> so is acting then something like let's say five years from now you still want to be involved in or are you also looking at doing that and doing other sort of walks mm. of life okay you're gonna lean on what you were doing at uni or yeah i hope that there will still be, like, a place for the industry, a place in the industry for me in five years' time. I'd love that. Yeah. Um, but if there's not and it starts to break my soul apart, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then oh, I'd happily, you know, look towards a different career. It's, like, it kind of feels like this exciting blip that's happened to me in, like, my early 20s and how crazy was that? And who knows, like, how long it'll go for, but it feels like one of those things that I'll either be in when I'm 50 with kids or I'll be, like, Hey, look what your mum did when, yeah. you know, yeah. when she was 20. So um, I think either way, I'll be happy. And I think I was talking to, um, I think I was talking to my mum about this the other day. It was like, as long as every job that I do and every thing that I go for, I feel full and happy with and I've, you know, acted with intention by doing so, like it fulfilled a part of me in that moment, then I can never look back on anything with regret yeah. because I did all that I could mm. with what was, you know, Get available to me. Well, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you're doing pretty well. That goes without saying. You're doing uh, pretty well. Thank you. So you're quite excited then for season two? Oh, I'm so excited. You know, just come out of a year of COVID. So to actually work again and like, I'm so excited just to do it again and hopefully remind myself that I can still do it. And if I can't, then maybe I'll have to go back to that degree a little bit faster than I thought. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All of the PowerPoint presentation. Oh. I wouldn't knock it yet. Do you actually have any, like, apart from that, yeah, the PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> do you have in mind how you might get into the, back into the character? Or mm. you, like, do you re-watch the season or do you reread the script or... I haven't read the script, no. that's No, I haven't even thought about that. I've um, watched the season maybe one or two times. I think I'll get scared if I overdo it. I'm going to start criticising myself a little too much. Um, you know, first time's exciting. Second time's like, I'm in the story. Third time's like, whoa, Aaron, what the fuck are you doing? So like, I cannot do that. Um, but I think just once I start seeing scripts of season two and then, you know, giving, uh, giving breath to the words and being able to like speak them aloud and put my accent on, the accent's actually really helpful. The fact that I play an American, like. True. That's... Maybe that's your symbolic. I think it might be actually. I'm like, now I think about it, as soon as the accent's on, Tony comes out. So, um. Yeah, script, accent. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I know. Well, everyone, I'm sure, is very excited for you guys. Yeah. Kicking yeah, off congratulations. Well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, That's it's a very awesome. big achievement. Well, let's wrap this one with a nice one. Okay. Do you have any advice 
for anyone that was in your shoes five years earlier? Um, maybe this goes back to my earlier point. I think obviously having goals and dreams and passions is so important, but if it is getting to the point where it's hurting, it's hurting you more than what, you know, more than what you're getting out of it, yeah. then just like, don't be so hard on yourself. It's all good. It's just a job, but also yeah. it's a really fun one. So yeah. <laughs> seems like quite good advice. That was quite good advice. Yeah. Yeah. A bit touched here. Yeah. 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 I was kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking directly to you. Yeah. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. To you. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Oh, plug. You can watch The Wilds on Amazon Prime. Um, you want to share your login details? <laughs> you I have it as well. Get your seven-day free trial and just binge it. No, yeah. no buy the subscription to it. <laughs> um, other than that, no, just... Just that. All right, well, we'll, we'll link your Instagram later. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. I know. I mean, you don't have to follow me if you want to. It's all good, but it's <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Oh, I'm thanks very for having me on, to guys. See what you're doing, and as always, keep it hairy. Oh, keep it hairy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. And that's a wrap. So a big thanks again to Erina for coming on. She's really genuine. You can tell she's super sincere and I can't wait to see her career flourish. You can follow her at Erina underscore James on Instagram. Make sure you go check out The Wilds on Amazon Prime. Thank you again to Adrian for being a fantastic co-host as always. Please chuck him a follow if you're interested at AK underscore DeVries. He posts a lot of his new work there and he'll have any information about upcoming shows. Again, a shout out to Boyd Kelly for the little jingle playing now. He just dropped a new track called Tower 4 on Spotify, which I can confirm is a certified hairy banger. I'm hoping to get him on soon, so stay tuned to find out a little bit more about that. In regards to Harry, you can always find us at Harry Originals on Instagram, as well as at www.harryoriginals.com. We've got some exciting stuff coming up for autumn, so I can't wait to share that all with you. But until then, everyone, take care, keep it hairy.